Good morning. Hope you're all doing okay. It's lovely to see you all. Uh, today I'm going to be reading one of my favourite stories to read uh, my little boy uh, and it's called Clockwork Dragon. What I really like about this is that uh, the main character has to use their creativity countless times throughout the story to try and uh, solve challenging problems uh, and I hope that some of you are still able to do that even though you're learning distantly. Okay here we go. Finished, said Max. He wound up the little clockwork course and watched it gallop across the workbench. Just then, Max's master, the toy maker, returned. Crash! The horse galloped off the bench and smashed to pieces on the floor. You were supposed to be painting puppets, shouted the toy maker. I've told you, cogs and springs are for clocks, not toys. The toy maker was so angry that Max lost his job. So he went to look for a new one on the town notice board. There was only one job advert and it had been there for months. It said, Brave Knight wanted to rid the kingdom of Flame Throttle, the ferocious man-eating dragon. And it's got various other things around it as well. Uh, it, it's got the toy makers, toys, it's got Lost, it's got Dragon Hunter support group. And look, you can see the knights who have already tried to, and failed to defeat the dragon. There are no other jobs, thought Max. So I suppose I should give it a try. Max knew that a knight's that, sorry, that a knight should have a suit of armour. So he went to the armourer's workshop. You don't look like a knight, said Lizzie, the girl who was working there. What do you want armour for? I'm going to get rid of the dragon, said Max. Lizzie laughed. <laughs> you? You'll never do it. The only thing that could get rid of that dragon is a bigger, scarier dragon. But Lizzie's words had given Max an idea. I think I know how to do it, he said. But I'm going to need your help and lots of metal. Later that night, Max and Lizzie crept to the entrance of Flame Throttle's cave and quietly collected the huge heap of weapons and armour which was all that was left of the brave knights who dared to go inside. No collar, no cold collars! Back at the workshop, they took everything to bits and began to make something new. They worked for seven days and seven nights. Heating and hammering, painting and patching, and piecing together until... It's finished! said Max, fastening the last plate in place. It had better work, yawned Lizzie. Of course it will, said Max, just as soon as we wound it up. I wonder what it's going to be. Flame Throttle awoke the next morning opened his terrible jaws wide and let out a deafening yawn. <sighs> Time for breakfast, he said. But no more nights. I'm fed up with eating tinned food. I'll pop into town and pick up a plump princess or two. Licking his lips in anticipation, Flame Throttle left the cave 
to find a bigger, fiercer looking dragon outside. What are you doing here? It roared. Eh, eh, I, I live here, said Flame, uh, Flame Throttle nervously. Not anymore, you don't, bellowed the new dragon. Out! Right! stuttered Flame Throttle, glancing back in his, uh, at his treasure. P perhaps I could just collect a few. Out now! roared the other dragon, chasing the terrified Flame Throttle away from the cave. I told you this would work, grinned Max, as he pulled on the controls of the clockwork dragon. It's not over yet, said Lizzie, as they chased out of a forest and leapt over a startled cow. They had almost chased Flame Throttle right out of the kingdom when the huge mechanical legs slowed down and then ground to a halt. Max fiddled frantically with controls, but nothing happened. The clockwork monster must have run down. He groaned, realising that he was no longer being chased. Flame Throttle crept back to investigate. What's wrong? he asked from a safe distance. Um, um, nothing. I'm just having a rest, said Max, speaking through the uh, pipe that made Clockwork Dragon's voice. What do we do? whispered Lizzie. If he breathes fire on us, we'll be baked alive. If only we could wind up the motor, said Max. Meanwhile, Flame Throttle had crept closer to get a better look at the other dragon. What's that key for? he asked. Then Max had another of his ideas. Please don't touch that, he called. It's very important. What did you tell him that for? hissed Lizzie. Why is that key important? demanded Flame Throttle. Because I'm a mechanical dragon, replied Max. If you turn it, my legs will lock and I won't be able to chase you. Really? said Flame Throttle gleefully, and he grabbed the key and gave it a turn. Please don't turn it again! wailed Max. If you do, my claws will lock and I won't be able to grab you. Ho, 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 said Flame Throttle, and he couldn't resist giving the key another couple of turns. Please stop, whimpered Max once more, or my jaws will lock and I won't be able to eat you. So, of course, Flame Throttle seized the key and turned it again and again and again until it wouldn't turn any more. Now I've got you, yelled Flame Throttle triumphantly. No, now I've got you, said Max, pulling hard on the controls. The fully wound clockwork dragon sprang forwards with gaping jaws. Yeah! screamed Flame Throttle as the razor sharp teeth came snapping towards him. And without stopping to see if the metal dragon's legs and claws were also working, he scrambled off out of the kingdom and was never seen again. Everyone was so pleased to be rid of Flame Throttle that Max and Lizzie were given the dragon's treasure as a reward. Then they used it to set up a clockwork toy shop. This shop sold everything from clockwork archers to clockwork zebras 
But their most popular toy was, well, can you guess? Yes, it was their little clockwork dragons, of course. Well, I ho hope you like that story uh, and I hope that you're all doing well and keeping safe and maybe finding some time in afternoons to get out for a wee walk or cycle uh, in the sun. I look forward to seeing you when things have, uh, are over. Bye.